Hello again. I was going to review this today. Winslow Yerkes' Blues Harmonica for Dummies. What it led me to think about was to start thinking about harmonica tablature because I was looking at some of <clears throat> Winslow's notations in the book. And harp tabs are kind of necessary evil, I think. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with them at the, at the best of times. Very, very useful for some things, catastrophic for others. Um, so I think I'm just going to start by doing um, a list of good and bad harp tabs. The first good thing, uh, pretty obviously, it shows you what to play. If you want to play something and someone's tabbed it out for you, or you've tabbed it out yourself, then you have some sort of written guide on where you're going with it. Um, and in many cases, that's that's enough. That's more than enough. Right? Really good. Helpful for that. You know, you can pass them around. They're easily, um, easily communicated as well. That's the second point. You can pass them around. You can email them. And less complex by far than standard notation. Um, the main use really is as a learning aid, I think. Tabbing out exercises, tabbing out grooves and rhythms, specific licks. Um, even just to have a quick visual prompt or reference, to have something there written down is handy, right? We need that. Obviously, we're going to aim to break away from them at some point because they're a learning aid. They're not a tool that you use to create music. Moving on to bad. Well, actually, I said in the good that they show you what to play. But first in the bad, they don't actually show you what to play, do they? Because there's no sense of notating rhythm, dynamics, uh, you know, um, emphasis, tone, all that stuff is difficult to communicate in tab. And the tabs that do try and incorporate a lot of that information, they end up being pretty unreadable pretty quickly. They can become a crutch, um, i.e. people become overly reliant on them. Obviously, we don't want to play from tabs forever. You want to be able to play without a tab. But honestly, do not let it become a crutch for you. Oh, it's hard to wean yourself off as well. That's the reason it's a problem, really. Because once you start, it can be difficult to stop. There's also, as we're about to find out in glorious Technicolor, um, there's no standard for harmonica tab. Um, there are some vaguely universal rules, um, but there is any amount of variation within rules, I should say. Um, there's no body overseeing this. So the trouble is, if you're getting tabs from different sources, you're almost certainly looking at a different form of tablature, which means you've got to learn the new form. And jumping between these things uses up a lot of brain power that could be better spent elsewhere, I guess. And lastly here, um, they can lead to a false sense of confidence. You could be playing really well, but if you're relying on the tab, you're not really playing it. Um, this isn't... Um, classical concert music, um, blues harmonica, a score is, uh, is not traditionally a part of, uh, of playing it, right? It's supposed to come from improvisation and Im improvisation skills come from learning um, and playing a lot. And again, the strategies for improvising. Anyway, next I'm gonna look at some examples and show three different kinds of tab that I've loosely grouped together into sort of text-based, graphical, and then a higher level of completely bespoke. So the most basic kind of harmonica tab is just to use um, a system of plain text and a series of numbers which will tell you which hall to blow or draw, and a symbol, or lack of a symbol, 
which tells you to draw or blow. So whole number and then an indication on whether you're blowing or drawing. Um, that is the most simple and straightforward way of doing this. So I've got a couple of examples that I have pulled from uh, the wild, so to speak. As you can see, starting on a six, well, as you can't see, we're starting on a six blow. Um, in this example, we're using a minus sign before the draw notes, but no modifying sign for the blow notes. So if there's nothing there, you're assumed it's a blow, which is the exact opposite of the way I do it, which is the way David Barrett does it. Um, but it is more common, I think. And obviously you often see this with the lyrics underneath as well. Um, so that actually, for jotting out a simple melody, that's pretty foolproof. It's simple, it's easy to understand. You can see where the notes fall in context, or you can if the person who's typed it out has used a proper monospaced font. Half of the trouble with tabs that look like this is that by the time they get to you, they have been mashed up into some horrible kind of format. So you're not even looking at necessarily uh, accurate tablature. Um, but the thing with the lyrics underneath is that it does add some sense of how you're supposed to play the notes because you're going to be familiar with the melody. This variety of tab is where things start to get idiosyncratic. Um, and this is where most, most published tab that I've seen um, that isn't purely text-based will be this. Probably there is more purely text-based stuff. I've got some examples here. The first thing is uh, we're just using arrows now with the numbers instead of uh, pluses or minuses which is fair enough. Um, it's still easy to see what's going on, I think. Although I wish that those chords weren't vertically centered, I've just noticed. Anyway, uh, this is from Tom, Tom Ball's book on uh, sanitary licks. And there's another example of that there. So for the bends here, we start getting things like little wavy lines or little lines with dashes on them to indicate bending. I mean, that's fairly straightforward. That's quite a nice little step on from the plain text, I suppose. It, it, it is quite easy on the eye until we start adding too much information in, I guess. What about this? This is, I think this is from the Dummies book. This has got, I guess those X's and O's are telling you to open and close a cup, maybe. Um, we've got suggested vocalizations along with the arrow. And there is the introduction of musical, standard musical symbols here, which are giving you a rhythm, or well, some indication of rhythm as well. So, although tabs don't show you rhythm, people certainly have made a few attempts at doing so. So we've got that kind of thing. I mean, this is where things start getting really weird. Two, two, one, two, two, one, one, two. Two. I'm not sure what that's referring to. I've got no idea what the Bs are. Is it all blow? Well, no, we've got pluses for blows. I don't know what that is. I mean, I could probably work it out, but it's not pretty, is it? It's starting to get a little bit uh, peculiar looking at that point. Um, here's another example. With this one, it's very similar to the last one. Um, I mean, I would. it might even be from the same from the same source, I'm not sure. But I don't know what's going on on that one either. I get that there's a little four with the rest there, that's cool. I don't know what the sixes are referring to. Obviously, if I'd read the instruction in the book, I would know this, but this is the point about just jumping between different sources, right? You just get lost and confused. Um, and of course, you can mix your text uh, or text with arrows tabs with standard music notation. Um, I really like that. Not that I can read music. I can't. I mean, I could probably work it out on the back of a coaster, you know, if you gave me a bit of time. But what you do get there is quite a strong sense of 
rhythm in the way it's expressed in standard notation. So obviously you need to know standard notation to some extent for that to work. So I guess I do know it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I could pull a little bit closer to the melody there with that information. Oh look, there's another one I forgot about. This one's just got rings around numbers. Uh, presumably the rings being draw or the rings being blow. Who knows? Anyway, they're just a few uh, examples I got from a cursory search. Um, quick insert here again. I found another couple of rather nice examples. Have a look at this one set out in a sort of table. That is tough on the eye, man. There's a lot of information there. We, we know what's happening on each beat. And it subdivides the beat as well. But that is looking really confusing now. So there's that one. And then there's another example there where you can see that once a lot of movement's going on, that becomes... Well, I don't know about you. <clears throat> Maybe it is for you, but blimey. Uh, that can do one, quite frankly. Uh... I really like these ones. Um, so this first example here is uh, a really pretty, uh, really pretty looking thing with little actual arrows with the uh, quills, quills, flights on them, um, color coded by the looks of things. If it's grey, it's a draw, I'm guessing. And you've got the lyrics there as well. I think that's really sweet. I like it that someone's gone to that extra effort there to do that. Cool. What I really wanted to show you here, if you're not familiar with this, um, you'll be familiar with the player, Joe Felisco. Um, and if you're not, you definitely need to check him out. Wonderful, wonderful player, teacher, harmonica customizer, you name it. But he's got his own tab system and it blows my mind. <clears throat> I'm gonna cycle through some examples here while I, uh, while I look at these and talk to you about it. So there is so much information being communicated here on, on Joe's tabs. The downside of which is that they are really tough to read. We've got rhythmic information. Uh, he's putting the chords in there for us, which is nice. We've got blows and draws. We've got little slashes on the, uh, the arrows there for um, bends, I assume. Uh, little lines indicating slurs and dips. I mean, when you see a whole page of this stuff, it's mad. Because there's so much information, you have to take in so much so quickly. But, I mean, it's beautiful. I absolutely I think it's fantastic. Um, I really love it. But I just don't think it's that practical. Although it would be, of course. It is practical, because this is how, he's, how he... Um, presents this tab to his students so it's obviously working i find it a little bit too complex and visually overwhelming um but i definitely think it's cool um so where does that leave us after we've had a look through those i mean clearly there's a lot of different styles and varieties and ways of doing this excuse me, and everyone's going to have their own preferences on what they prefer. But the problem with people's preferences is that they're usually based around whatever the person learned first because that's what they're most familiar with. So unless you've put a lot of time into learning different forms of tab, then probably your favourite will be whatever you started and that's the one that's going to make the most sense to you. If you want my personal opinion, and even if you don't, I'm going to give it, I like the Barrett uh, way of doing it with um, a set of basic tabs accompanying standard music notation. Um, the combination of the two allows you to get through really well. Like... If we didn't even have harmonica tab, we would still have standard music notation. Right, that's going to give us enough information to play, probably. I mean, standard notation is developed over years. Obviously, it's a proper standard. Everyone understands what each of the symbols mean. Um, that in itself is incredibly useful because you know you're not going to be talking at cross purposes with anyone. 
Um, it does a much better job of communicating rhythm. Um, it's easy to replicate and share, especially digitally. The only downside, really, is that there is, undeniably, a very, very steep learning curve there. If you are learning to read standard music notation for the purposes <coughs> excuse me, of playing harmonica, I take my hat off to you. That's fantastic. Um, it will not be time wasted, but it's probably overkill. You don't need to read standard notation. And obviously not everyone is going to want to have that kind of commitment. So that's, it's for that reason, that sort of area that this that, that tab seeks to fill. People who don't know proper music notation, but need a little, a little push in the right direction. Standard notation is always going to be there. So at the end of all that waffle, um, what do we know about harmonica tabs and where are they going? There's a need for harmonica tabs. Um, there's a real need for it. Um, the functions that they perform well, they perform really, really well. Um, very easy for beginners to comprehend and get started with. Um, I would love it if there could be some sort of standardization across harmonica tablature. Um, I think it would be, I, I generally think standards on stuff like that are better uh, for everyone because everyone knows what everyone else is talking about. We've all got the same uh, language. And, and this is a problem I'm adding to because I've got my own variation. The things, stuff that I use is uh, basically Barrett's tab. And sometimes I look at the tab I put together and just think, that looks rubbish but there's not much you can do about it it looks like it looks right it would be nice to standardize but there's no there's yeah it's not that important and there's not much sign of it happening i do wonder if it's been discussed at sort of spa and whatnot would it be a good idea if we standardized on all this stuff like i've said my preference is for the text based text based with standard notation is just the most straightforward seeming to me um, and but then again it is what I'm used to so so there you go I mean I think the best advice of all is I think I said this earlier tabs are a learning aid they're not a tool you're using to play music okay they they're for getting you to the point that you can play but you absolutely need to separate yourself from tab at some point. And there's not much more to it than that, really. It's a bit of a shame, and it's a bit of a mess. But lots of things, harmonica, are a bit of a shame and a bit of a mess. It's actually pretty much par for the course. Um, so I'll just leave that there, but uh, let me know what your thoughts are on tabs. Do we need them? Are they useless? Are you one of those guys that just plays by feel, man? Thanks for watching. Um, thank you for the Patreon people. There was two new videos dropped in uh, Patreon last week. There'll be another one this Friday on playing over non-blues chord changes. I'm off. Um, uh, see you next Tuesday for the Life, Love and Blues Harmonica Licks video. Take care.